Welcome to 843 TV. I'm your host, Lisa Richardson. And I'm Katherine Maidaman. And today we're coming to you from Bridges Prep on the Celadon campus on Ladies Island. And I'm very excited to be here because there's so much growth and development that's going on at this campus and the school system. And we're going to find out about that today. We absolutely are. Uh, one of our first guests up is the new head of school, Mr. Gary McCullough. And we also have Jenny Baggett, who's the kindergarten teacher, and also Tiffany Woodard, who's the first grade teacher. So stick around in a few minutes. There's going to be a bustling playground behind us and you'll be learning all about Bridges Prep. This is 843 TV, where communities come to speak. Eight four three TV, where the Low Country comes to speak. Eight four three TV, where communities come to speak. Welcome to eight four three TV. We are excited to be here at Bridges Prep at the Celadon campus, and joining us today is the new head of school, Mr. Gary McCulloch. Great to We're be here. We're so excited to have. Thank you. the opportunity to come out here today. I know you have so many things that you want to share with us today. What makes Bridges Prep so special? Well, first off, thank you so much for being here. And I'm so glad the rain held up. This is <laughs> fantastic to be here and see these amazing kids behind us. I'm also surrounded with great educators and I get to do that on each of our campuses because they share a common vision of mine and that's kids. They're very passionate about our kids and we focus heavily today, and every school should, on social, emotional, and academic development. It's about relationships with kids and connecting with kids. And our teachers pay special attention to that with their whole child development that they have in each classroom, where it's safe for kids to be. Mm -hmm. Kids want to have that sense of self-agency and that confidence in each of their classrooms. And our teachers are able to provide those amazing environments with a rigorous curriculum that certainly challenges every single one of our kids. Mm. You know, that's interesting to say, there's very passion that's going on here. So before we get too much into the curriculum, because we will talk about that, because I want to learn about that, let's talk about the, the nuts and bolts of the school system, you being the headmaster. Um, curriculum, yes. Uh, development, and what's our mission, and what's our vision for the school? So the vision is always that every single child is as smart as the other inside that classroom. And that's all built on foundation of great teachers. We stagger our lesson and we build foundation with kids so that every single person comes to the table with something to say in that classroom. You've been in classes where you've been shy to raise your hand. Mm -hmm. And it's really important that we develop that self-agency in our classrooms and the kids feel safe in there to take chances. And that's what great teachers do in positive environments. Yeah. Well, the uniqueness of the school system, right now you're on three different campuses, mm -hmm. correct? We're K through 12. Mm -hmm. Tell us the dynamics of that. Sure. So on this campus right behind us, is kindergarten through second grade and then on Boundary Street we have three through eight and then on our Port Royal campus we have nine through twelve and in January we'll be opening that beautiful building mm -hmm. and fifth through twelfth grade will all be there and by the following August K through twelve on one campus. Amazing indeed. I know you can't wait for that. Can't wait. <laughs> Let's talk about the fact that Bridges is a free public charter school. There may be some confusion about what that means because some people might be thinking prep, private school. Share about that. So as a public charter, there is access for all. This is a school of choice. And it's a school of choice in a region. So that does not limit us just to Beaufort County. It's also Jasper County, it's Colleton County, and it's Hampton County that we have kids coming mm. from. So you have to enter a lottery system and we have a healthy wait list but we're gonna be growing, so kids are gonna have more opportunities to be here. So don't be afraid to put your name in right now right. And, and wait on that list. I know, well how many kids do we have right now in the program? We have 770 kids right now, and then when we max out, we'll be at 1,196 students. Wow. So there's a lot of yeah. room for growth, and a lot of kids yes. who are on the wait list can join in. They're gonna be happy. Mm. Well, that's very exciting. So with this, the, the charge of putting a whole school system together like this and always building and growing. What is the development programs? Do you have charities and fundraisers and things like that that you're working with? 
Sure. So fundraising is what we do here. Mm -hmm. It's it, we have uh, three opportunities for our families. We'll have a golf tournament on November the 16th. Uh, we also have our Shrimp and Grits Festival, which has been <laughs> very, very um, impressive in Port Royal. That is on March 28th. And then from April 20th until the 30th, that's gonna be our booster thon. Our booster thon is a, also a great success. So all of those, they just support kids. So mm -hmm. we, we have programs as a result of that. Knowing you from a previous school system, you are so hands-on and so mm -hmm. interactive. And I think that's such a great selling point. Why do you feel that's important as a head of school to be that hands-on? I, I grew up in Canada. And if you knew the principal, it was for the wrong reason. Ah. Or if you knew the head of school, it was for that wrong reason. And we need leaders in our schools that personalize instruction, mm -hmm. personalize relationships, because kids need that support model in each of their schools. You've seen it, Lisa, when I've been in pri prior mm -hmm. schools. Uh, kids, you don't command respect in a school, you earn that respect mm -hmm. from kids. And it's about being in their classrooms, connecting with them, knowing what they're doing inside and outside of school. That's what it's all about. So when you come to Bridges, you're a part of a family here. You know, I want to make one more point, but that's such, it's passion, I feel it. I, I love mm -hmm. the fact that I wish I had children to put in the school system here, but I, you also have an important year. You have your first graduating class. Yes. Yeah. So this is exciting. So we do, we move to our first graduating class this year, and they are actually getting a tour of the new school on Tuesday of next week, and they're just so excited to represent us. We have a gra gra graduating class of 42 this year. Wow. But, mm -hmm. you know, that's a nice healthy number, mm -hmm. but our goal will be to have 92 kids in every single one of our grade levels, and we are very confident that that is going to happen. Mm -hmm. We're going to continue to branch out to our community. Every kid should be a part of this amazing environment. Where else can we guarantee you class sizes of 23 students? Well, that's exciting. Okay, well, we're going to be back with more 843 TV. Stay with us. We're back with 843 TV and I'm very excited to introduce you to Tiffany Baggett who's a kindergarten teacher and I have Tiffany Woodard who is the first grade teacher here. Ladies, thank you for joining us. So let's start with Jenny. Jenny, yes. you're the kindergarten teacher. Yes. Uh, let's start about your background. Tell us about how you, what you're teaching and do you have a philosophy? Well, I've been teaching for 15 years. Um, I taught in the county school system and when um, I heard about Bridges, I read the charter and it just was everything that I believed in. It has the character education, the Padea, um, and the STEM. So when I read that, I just, the first thing I did was enroll my kids here and then I put in my application because it just spoke to, it was everything that I've always done in my classroom. Um, Padea is a whole child approach. It's active learning and it really believes that all children can learn. So. No matter the level they're on, it, in, it encompasses everyone. You know, we start with Socratic seminar. Um, in kindergarten, we're just, the kids are learning how to listen to one another. They're learning how to speak. We're encouraging those kids. And as you go up through the grades, it just gets, you know, it grows and grows um, to where it's, it just gets to a really, a lot deeper level. But one thing I've noticed is that even from the children, the really low children to the GT, it covers all of that in one, setting so the Padea is just amazing for that. It also includes project work. Um, in kindergarten we're doing a project where we study fairy tales and they'll work with other classes, collaborate with other, other kindergarten classes and through um, we'll do seminars, um, lots of different interactions and then they'll, they'll do the production for the parents, that will be the project where they'll make their own scenery, their own costumes, that kind of thing. Another project that's going on is the seniors are doing a community service project with Mayor Kaiserling. Mm -hmm. And so it really allows them to have a deeper understanding of the community, a deeper understanding of each other. It teaches them those critical thinking 21st century skills, you know, to go out in the world and know how to work with other people. And then ultimately there will be an authentic product, you know, that they'll um, you know, they'll present to the community. So um, that's, Padea is just 
it's the whole child and so when you come in you see it everywhere and it goes really well with the responsive classroom that we do it just encourages everyone to participate everyone is important and everybody's voice really um, is heard it sounds like a wonderful program mm -hmm. it's quite a lot involved mm -hmm. to it if I'm a parent and I'm considering bridges over another place what might my kindergartner expect in a typical day well when you come into kindergarten um, the classroom it's just amazing because the kids are really responsible for the classroom and when you give them responsibilities and you give them ownership of the classroom it's amazing what they can do sometimes people think oh a, a five-year-old can't do that but it, 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 they really will blow your mind. Mm -hmm. um, they take ownership in the classroom. All the work is authentic, it's theirs. Um, they know how to um, change things if something runs out. They know how to fix things. They know how to, where everything is. And they feel at home and they feel like they can be themselves and be very comfortable in the classroom. When kindergartners come in, they're very unsure of themselves and they're scared to make a mistake and we just constantly reassure them that you know they're just here to do their best and to try and the environment is so comfortable and so um, welcoming and with their ownership that they have in the classroom they really it's amazing how they open up and you get great writing from them, great yeah. um, conversations. Well, that's terrific. You know, so as the kids leave your classroom, they articulate up to Tiffany's classroom and you're the first grade teacher. Yes. So as we move over, move up, mm -hmm. tell us the day in the life of a student with your class. Okay, so each and every day we start with morning meeting. And so through that, they I love are- that. morning meeting? Yes. First morning, graders. First grade. <laughs> So in that, we are greeting each other with fun little um, icebreakers. Um, it takes them a while to learn each other's names. And they're learning how to look at one another when someone's talking and listen to each other. And through that, over a course of just not very long, but just a few days, they start feeling comfortable and speaking out. In the very beginning, they're shy. They might have some friends from kindergarten, right. but mm -hmm. it's a whole new group. And so some of them are reluctant to speak up and speak out. And so three morning meeting that gives them that safety that they need to, you know, share. And I and, want to point out, yeah. don't forget, this is the beginning of September. So yes. all the kids are just in getting to know each yes. other. So we're just two weeks into We're day school. 18. Day yes. 18. Uh -huh. so, okay. yeah. so this is very new and this is very, really, what's, what's a hot topic, what's going on in the classroom. Yes. So after we have morning meeting, what happens? Um, so then we move into our reading time. And so the way we work here is we present a mini lesson, the teacher will, and then of whatever the objective or skills are for that lesson and then it's up to the kids to work together or individually or in partnerships small groups um, to accomplish that task so the students really take ownership of their learning so we, we do writing we do independent uh, reading we do independent reading time they have their own levels that they're on from kindergarten and then um, we continue to assess them and they move up in their levels and everything and so then um, they are able to choose the books that they want to read and then they meet with partners and um, have great conversations about the books they're reading. I think it's um, exciting that behind us are all these kids having fun, screaming and just interacting. And that's missing today in our culture, isn't it? Where mm -hmm. the kids are out and just, just interacting and learning. Mm -hmm. So many lessons happen out there. Why is this an important piece of the day as a teacher, even as an administrator? Why is that so important to have that time? Well, they need just, these are little little people, yeah, and they need time to get their energy out. And so we have two recesses a day. Oh, we wow, have, two we recesses. We have a morning okay. recess and an afternoon rest, recess, 20 minutes long. So it just gets them up and out of the room um, just to burn off some energy. Mm -hmm. And, um, it's, it's and as you remember, so many life lessons happen on the playground. Mm -hmm. and, and today, I think that's missing a lot mm -hmm. in our culture, unfortunately. So right. that's a great part of your learning environment, yes. for sure. Thing. Well, thank you for sharing your information with us, yes. and we will be right back with more A43 TV. And we're back on A43 TV, coming to you from Bridges Prep on the Celadon campus, talking with the staff and the new head of school. Ladies, we've been talking about the whole child approach. How does that look like in these early grades? 
Um, well, we start with just developing a classroom atmosphere where the, kid, the kids feel safe and loved. And in that, they're going to be more free to speak out and share their ideas when they feel like they have a voice. So that's very important. And then our lessons are challenging and engaging. Um, we want the, the learning to be student-centered and the teachers step back and be more of a facilitator of the learning. And so the kids are collaborating in groups and, and doing the work together and problem solving together. And then there's just this mutual respect for each other. And when that's happening, learning is more meaningful and taking place. So you're empowering the kids is what you're doing, yes. which is wonderful. Any thoughts on from your end? I totally agree. I think when you make your classroom community a safe environment for the kids and they feel loved and they feel welcome and they take ownership, the academics just fall into place. I think once you set the tone, it takes a good month for kindergartners to really get them in the routines and to really let them know that you love them and you care about them and you know I always tell my kids nobody's bad you know you're not in trouble Let's, we always talk about it we talk about the character traits once they understand that they want to do well for you they want to learn they get excited about learning and it just makes the learning so fun and it just comes easy you know one question I do have we haven't talked about parents how do you want parents to facilitate their kids that's in their classrooms what can they do um, well, we, um, we love parent involvement, um, any kind of volunteer, um, any, they, they'd like to come in and read or work with kids doing activities, um, chaperoning field trips, um, we encourage them to read with their kids at home every night, that's probably one of the most important things. And one of the things that I see um, happening less and less is parents talking with their kids, you know, mm -hmm. so many kids are on tablets, so I just encourage the parents yeah. to talk with their kids and ask. You know, ask those open-ended questions instead of just how was your day, you know, what was the best part of your day or what center did you go to or how, you know, what was the worst part, just different things to really get your kids talking and have those conversations. Gary, from your view from the top, what is your view of that whole child approach? Yeah. So whole child approach doesn't happen by accident. You've got to have amazing educators. And amazing educators are what makes that foundation work across the board. It's got to be consistent at kindergarten and all the way through 12th grade. This was new at Bridges this year as far as doing their morning meetings in 12th grade and also down to the middle school. There's going to be discomfort with that. But ultimately, it's so important that we build these quality relationships and connections with our students. Mm -hmm and we do it in many avenues. One, it's through those really amazing diagnostic interventions in classrooms, but two, it's through Huddle. And Huddle is something I personalize on every campus. It's about building an amazing culture for kids and having that consistent language. So when we bring together kids, October 4th is our, our Huddle, uh, that's where we're gonna talk about courage and acceptance and then that's also anti-bullying month mm -hmm. and that's where we're gonna talk about what that looks like in a school and all of the supports that you have but it's important that we recognize the great things that our kids are doing outside of this school and also inside of the school and then we take our kids yeah. to Outback Steakhouse oh, all of our kids wow. that are students of the month go to Outback Steakhouse <laughs> but you know the most important thing is learning a pillar and a pillar of character is so important that we develop quality citizens in our schools. So if you have a, a, the a name on the pillar as far as courage, and that's all you have on your marquee, that does nothing in your school. But if you talk about it, you give kids strategies to work on it in school, and it happens in our morning meetings in every single one of our classes, that's when you're making the magic happen. Yeah. I want to also touch base, I mean, we're on the, the low grade campus now, but I want to talk a little bit about the middle school because from here they move forward, right? Um, as they articulate into third, fourth, fifth campus, great campus, tell us about their experiences and what we, we think they're going to have. Yeah. So in middle school at Bridges, you're not a number. And unfortunately in some of our schools, we have so many kids and uh, I have been in schools where we've had 42 in a classroom. That will not happen at Bridges Preparatory School where we guarantee our class size at 23. 
because ultimately you have to personalize education for kids. Mm -hmm. They have to f have that sense of belonging. They have to be connected to their environment. And when you have well over 40 in a classroom, we, can, we certainly compromise the educational environment. As we wrap up, I know it's so exciting with the campus coming soon. Tell us about that, where we are with it, and what to expect. Well, I'm just so happy for our families that have been so dedicated to our school. Mm -hmm. I'm happy for our board. Our board has worked tirelessly to get this campus to where we're going to be. And there, I'm also happy for all of our educators and our students because they're so committed to our school and all of these students that love to come here. But what about being on one cam campus? That mm -hmm. is where it is going to be. Uh, all of the fruits of those that labor yes. comes mm -hmm. together when we're on that same campus, K-12. Mm -hmm. So in January, grades 5 through 12 will be on our new campus. And then in August of next year, K through 12 all together. And we'll be able to serve 1,196 wow. students. And we will be filling every single one of those seats because this is the best school in this area. And we can't wait to be there with you and check it all out. So we thank you all for watching this episode of 843 TV, where communities come to speak.